So let's continue with the example. So earlier what we have done is we have created this action which is hello studs and then we have created this, this index.jsp. So we are using a studs library here which is studs tag and we are creating a form which belongs to again studs. So when we click on submit, it will fetch this username and it, this will assign the, this username to this action username which is username, right? And then when you click on this submit, it will call the action which is hello studs. But if you can observe here, when you create a servlet, you map your servlet somewhere and that is web.xml, right? But when you create an action, have we done any mapping? No, right? So whenever you click on a submit, so by default the request will go to web.xml. So what we need here is we have to create a web.xml. So by default, I don't have a XML file or uh, XML file. So let's create a XML file. So we'll say right click new. Uh, you can find here there's something called a standard deployment descriptor, or you can choose others. In this web, in web you will see there's something called a standard deployment descriptor. If you say next, this will give you the name which is the XML file, and click on finish. So this is your web.xml file. This, this is your web.xml file here. Now we have to do some configuration. Like when you click on that button, we have to inform your web.xml that this request need to handled by studs, not by you. Because all the requests, by default, it will come to web.xml. We just have to forward that request to studs. So in order to achieve that, we, we need to use something called as filters. So for filter weight, we need to use some tags called as filters. Again, I will not type those tags. I have uh, already defined those tags here. So what I can do is I will use this, uh, this tag and copy and will paste in my Eclipse or NetBeans. NetBeans here. Okay, so what you can do is you can just copy paste this, uh, this thing which is filter and filter mapping. Now, uh, so with the version of the, the, the class we need to use here is it is starts prepare and execute filter. So this, this class is responsible to uh, forward your request to the starts.xml file. So we, for which type of request we need to use starts. So we are saying star, which means for all the requests, we, we need to use starts. Okay, so using filter, you can forward the request from your XML, web.xml deployment descriptor to the sturge.xml. But hold on, do we have a sturge.xml file here? No, right? So we need to create sturge.xml also. But you have to make sure that your sturge.xml will belong to your source package. So it, it should be in a class path. So let's create an XML document and we'll name this XML document as sturge. We'll say next. We'll make it well format document and we'll say finish. Now, when you say well formed document, you will get this thing here, a XML tag and a root tag. So, but what we need here is we need to use some XML tags or search tag. So for that, what we have to do is we have to copy this code and we can paste it in our XML file. Okay, so now, so what we have here, we have Apache, uh, we have this uh, search.apache DDD. And then we have a package name which is which extends touch default here. Okay, uh, so what how it works? So when you click on this submit button, this submit button will will call a web.xml file. It says for all the requests you have to you have to shift this request to sturge.xml. And this it will check. Okay, what's the request? Request is for hello studs. I will forward this request to a class called as hello studs. But this class hello stars belongs to a package called as com dot novin dot hello stars, right? Now if you see here, this hello stars, it it has a method called as execute. So every time you click on that button, it will go to web.xml. So when you click on this button submit, it will go to web.xml. In this web.xml, it will forward this request to stars.xml. In this sturge.xml, it will check for the class name. And since it's a sturge, it will call the method which is action or sorry, execution. So it will call this method called as execution. Okay. 
And in this execution, what we are doing? We are returning a success, right? <coughs> Sorry. So we are returning a success. That means this is that success which we are returning there. So if you return there, uh, maybe failure, so we have to write failure here. So in case of success, it will call which page, which is index.jsb. You can also define a different result. So you can specify a result here which, with name. We can say it is maybe error. In case of error, we will call error.jsp. We have not created that uh, page here, but we can create a page and we can name it as error.jsp. So this method execute may return different different uh, statement, maybe a different different uh, string, maybe success, maybe error, maybe login. So all this will come here. So it will check for the result. If the result is success, then this page. If the result is error, then this page. So this is like a if else condition. Okay. But this time we are not going for this result. So let me remove this. So the only thing you have to remember here, we have to mention action and a result type. <clears throat> so if you mention result type which is success, it will call index.jsp. Clear? So this is what the configuration we have to uh, complete first. Now once you're done with the co uh, this configuration, we'll try to run this code. And how, how to run this code, that we'll see in the next part of the tutorial.